Up, Money Nardigans. This is the one and only Packer Girl 89, and today's Book Nardigan discussion video is going to be on Embrace by Jessica Shervington. And this is the first of many hashtag Angel Readathon. Of uh, the hashtag Angel Readathon, excuse me. So these videos might end up being a little bit longer. I haven't decided if I wanted to do it to two parts or not, um, or multiple parts, because there is so much mythology um, and detail in these books that eventually I want to use towards my Battle Angel um, book, <laughs> my book Nerdigan rant, the ultimate book Nerdigan rant that I mentioned in my um, hashtag uh, Angel Readathon announcement. So we'll see what happens. If you haven't read Embrace by Jessica Shervington, then what are you doing here? You seriously need to go read this book and then come back. And so we could talk about it because I love this book. And this, the reason why I started off with um, Embrace, because a lot of you guys are like, why did you start off with Embrace and not um, Fallen by Lauren Kate or uh, the Moral Instruments by Cassandra Clare. Well, I started off with Embrace because, one, it's based off of Hebrew angel mythology, and I'm Jewish, so I that is near and dear to my heart. And Jessica Shivington, I know I, I know you said on Twitter that you were considering doing another um, series based on Hebrew angel mythology, so please do it. It would make me really happy. And um, the other reason why I chose to do this series is because it's the most detailed with the angel mythology and I figured this would be a good base to start from, a good foundation to start um, my angel, um, hashtag angel readathon from. So yeah, there we go. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. You know, I've been starting from um, how uh, the books are from the beginning, like literally from the beginning, but um, I'm... I'm going to try and do something a little bit different because otherwise this video, the last time I tried to record it, it was like 43 minutes and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to try. So I gotta, I'm got i going to mention a little bit from the very beginning that <laughs> if I was Violet, because Violet was mentioning her training with Lincoln and she was saying that she hates to run. And she said the only reason she's running is that it's because of staring at Lincoln's butt. And I'm thinking, I, I don't blame you, Violet. I, I like staring at Link. I would love staring at Lincoln's butt too. I don't. I, that would be the only reason to get me running. I mean, in marching when I was in marching band, uh, my freshman year, and um, my ex-boyfriend, my now ex-boyfriend, uh, was marching right in front of me. And that was the only year he uh, that happened. Um, the other couple of years, he was either marching next to me or diagonally from me because we marched in a wedge. I was like thinking, I get to stare at his nice ass every practice. Yeah, I know I'm a pro. <laughs> it's terrible. But um, the other character in this book that's really good um, is Steph. And another reason why I started off with Embrace too is because the character development here, especially with. Um, Violet and uh, Seth is fantastic, and, and to an extent, um, uh, when we get to uh, Onyx, Onyx's character development is really good, and um, Dapper's character development is really good. I love the character development in this series. It's amazing, especially when we get to Empowered. I love it! Okay, but anyway, and I thought it was sweet. That I think Lincoln's awesome because, and Lincoln's character development is good too. But um, Lincoln is cooking Violet's meals, meals and training her, and I'm like, damn, I wish my man did that. You see, he's like the perfect man. Ben Reyes didn't even do that. Ben Reyes, did, well, Ben Reyes trained with Violet, but fuck, Ben Reyes didn't cook. Ben Reyes, call me Narcissus, man. So um, before she goes off and Violet goes and meets with uh, Lincoln for dinner, who uh, we find out from Violet's dad, who's an architect, um, had that awkward moment and told Lincoln about a very uh, private matter. I was just like, oh God, really? Uh, dads are so embarrassing. I know my dad, my parents did that too. 
but not a serious as violent situation, but they they tell embarrassing stories. But anyway, so in the box that her mother given her, and Violet's mother died at childbirth, um, which is very important uh, to uh, the story, and, and you'll see why in a sec. Um, so basically, uh, there's a tiny silver chain with um, with an amulet, a poem, um, a letter written from her mom, and the letter kind of gives some insight and foreshadowing um, to what's going to happen to her, and a rich band with the same circular symbol as the top of the top of the box. And Lincoln, Lincoln's just amazing. So he gives demands, I guess, in his warehouse. There's a demand, and he gives them to Violet's demands about um, a wall that I guess screams, "Paint me." And this wall is really important, especially later on in the series. And I love when authors do that. So that's why I'm mentioning the wall. Um, and how is this not perfect? Seriously. And um, Violet's two rules, and this is, is used throughout the series as well, is uh, don't run and don't quit. She told herself this after what happened to her. And also, I have to point out that Violet follows the hashtag super love guru method. And everyone gives me shit for this. Is the friends, fir friends first um, before dating is the best way to find love. And I've done this twice. And it's, I've had, even though the relationships didn't, didn't last, I mean, I've had the best love with them. So... And, of course, I mentioned the sympathy meal. And, but the thing is, is that, you know, Lincoln didn't bring it up. He was waiting for Violet to bring it up. And I was thinking, oh, Steve, Violet, you, you need to chill out. Violet, I, Violet frustrated me in this book, but, you know, I don't blame her for being, for frustrating me for many reasons, for being frustrated for many reasons. And, yes, I have to mention this, almost every character in this book has a major coffee addiction, especially Violet, who is the biggest coffee addict. And it's the, she's not a buckhead. She's just a coffee addict. Um, and so I guess the incident that happened to Violet was that she, Violet was 14, and a teacher tried to rape her at her old school. And, um, and, this hap and something similar happens to this, uh, to... Um, another character um, in a different series, which uh, we'll get to later on. Um, not in this uh, readathon. This will be picked up in um, when I pick up the hashtag uh, mythology readathon. Uh, so another teacher who worked on the opposite side of the school felt compelled to check that, class, that classroom, and, and Lincoln says someone interfered. And like after that, Lincoln wants to take, I love when Lincoln says he wants to take care of Violet. I'm like, I want a Lincoln. I really do. I want a Lincoln. So, and then when Violet goes home, she has this mysterious dream of a lion. And this lion is, a, is extremely important, and you'll see him throughout the series. And I'll explain why later on. So, um, uh, she gets attacked, and she's painting, and obviously, she's painting Lincoln's wall. She's an artist. So uh, she gets uh, clawed by uh, this lion, and she wakes up with the, the mark on her, a claw mark on her arm, as well as like this gray, this gray pattern on her veins. <laughs> and I love like right before, I, I know I'm moving on to the next part of the book, but I, I like right before she goes to dinner, and Violet looks so freaking amazing in her dress, thanks to Steph. I, I wish I had a girlfriend like Steph. She's awesome. Actually, I kind of do have a girlfriend like Steph, but she's just not the same size as me. Um, but anyway, she, uh, Violet is wearing like this black dress, and um, it has sleeve. I wouldn't wear the sleeves. I don't like the sleeves. But it's like completely backless, and she's, she's going to make Lincoln so fucking jolly, according to Steph, basically. And I love what, I love Steph's plan, and the quote, and I quote, she says, candy is dandy, but liquor is quicker, and I'm like, yes, I agree, <laughs> Steph. The answer, it's the answer, to, especially if you make a fruity drink, seriously. Um, uh, the answer is, liquor is the answer to love problems, especially getting a guy to admit that he likes you, is liquor, because it's, you heard of liquid courage. That's what liquor is, liquor courage. And, of course, at Hades, after, you know, Dad's gone, because Dad was at, uh, at Hades with him, Violet gets super drunk, 
and she totally get that she loved her when, uh, after um, he told her that she gave her that she installed an espresso machine um, at the uh, um, at the warehouse and I'm like oh my god I, I don't like thinking to myself I would do that too I've done the drunk dialing and told my ex that I still loved him I did that too so I'm just like I, I completely understand Violet I, I've been there done that and then Violet is drunk and you know she's trying to get over the shit you know, like oh fuck why the hell did I do this and she goes and dances on the dance floor and this mysterious stranger who we come to find is Phoenix is dancing with her and grabbing her and shit and Lincoln gets all pissed and takes her and walks her home and Violet is, is drunk you know Violet's drunk so she's all pissed off and you know she's like if you don't love me then just say it already damn it Lincoln and then Lincoln gives her this hot and heavy kiss and I'm like thank you thank you it's hot and heavy she pushes her against the, uh, the brick wall and makes out with her and I'm just like damn and Lincoln said he's he's um he's sorry I think he said he's sorry or wasn't sorry and um and Violet uh, yeah, he said he was sorry about it, about that, and Violet's like thinking, well, I'm not, I think Vi Violet said, well, I'm not sorry about that, and, and Violet's like thinking, don't stop that, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> so Steph, uh, Steph told her to go over to um, Lynx the next day to find out what the commie and RC is happening, so she goes over and she overhears you know, Griffin and Violet, uh, Griffin and, um, not Violet, Griffin and Lincoln talking about her being Gre um, Gregory and that she you knows he needs to tell her what's going on. And Lincoln doesn't want to that because he's not ready to tell her the truth. And of course, Violet hears everything. And um, so we find out what Gregory are. So Lincoln, Griffin, and Violet are Gregory. And they're half angel and half human that come of age at age 17. And it occurs right after the birth of. Um, if the parent dies um, within 12 days after the baby is born, and basically what happens, the um, the new death and new life creates a gateway for angel essence um, to uh, an angel to put its essence into the child. And an angel that told Lincoln that Violet was a destined Greg Gregory partner. So yeah, Gregory had partners, and I'll get into a little later why. Um, I'll get into in a second why uh, they have partners. And think of it like Parbatai from Moral Instruments, but predestined by the angels. And thank God that we have Griffin explain everything because he's the uh, um, Griffin, uh, he's the uh, Gregory guide of New York. So in the angel, uh, in the angel realm, which is a common theme in uh, angel in angel books, you'll see in the in the angel readathon. Um, the angel, so we have the angels. They watch over the um, human realm, but they choose when they interfere through influence. So angels guide humans through dreams and epiphanies and encourage what they are supposed to do. And the choice relies on the ind individual person. And then there are angels of light and darkness. So there's no good and evil or anything like that. There's, you know, angels of dark and angels of light. So the angels of dark will influence the drought and then the angel of light will bring you rain. So you get the picture, and it's to keep the balance of free will. And angels are forbidden to leave from the angel realm, but some, both light and dark, resented their servitude and left the angel realm. And you'll see this, um, especially when I get to Jocelyn da uh, Davis's um, books, uh, a beautiful, um, yeah, beautiful dark. You'll see that when we get there. Um, let's see, what's the other one? Oh yeah, here we go. And um, what, why they left the angel realm is they believed they were superior and that humans should be serving them and they became exiles, assuming human form, seeking revenge and still, but they still have their angel powers, but they lost their morals and their structure. So they are slowly going insane. So yeah, humanity is kind of driving them insane, the, the angels insane. So, and basically the light and dark, dark exiles have three, three things in common. They hate each other, they hate Gregory, and they don't care about casualties in war, and their wars. It, it's, it's really frustrating. Um, so there are ten angel ranks and they are signed by the seraphim, with the, high, um, with the highest being the soul. 
and it's very rare to be a Gregory um, from the soul. And so Lincoln has been a Gregory for nine years, and that means he lied about his age. So, and I'm thinking, so what, Violet? Age is just a number, and hell, he was training you to prepare you for the embrace. And I'm just kidding, because Violet's flipping the fuck out about Lincoln lying to her. And Lincoln let, Lincoln let Violet punch him. And, but he couldn't say anything. He couldn't say anything about him being a Gregory. He wasn't allowed to. And Violet, you know, she, uh, throughout Embrace, she tried to, before she embraced, she tried to say, tell um, uh, Steph, she tried to tell her dad about her being a Gregory, but she couldn't say anything. It's the angels. They, they won't let her do it. And seriously, she let Lincoln let her punch him. And what kind of man does that? And I think that was sweet. I think that was sweet of him, but damn. And I think I love Violet's trade of thought. Violet's like, okay, the only place I can go to calm down is the bathroom. So yes, so she went to the bathroom. So she quit to clear her thoughts. And you know, Griffin's like, I, I really would like to. I can I, as much as I love bathroom talk. It, I think I could. It, I have to go soon, and it's better for me to talk to you, like civilized people in the living room, or some shit like that. And I was just like, oh, I love Griffin. And Gr and by the way, Griffin has like a southern twang to his voice, and I think it's hilarious. I love him. Um. So basically. The choice to become Gregory is to embrace, and see Jessica, I see what you did there, and I love my mouth, there's two. <laughs> and uh, the exiles, is, even if you choose not to embrace, uh, the exiles can sense you whether you choose to or not, and you, but when you embrace, um, you gather an extra layer of protection. And Griffin did make a good point. Uh, Lincoln never had to dedicate so much time to to Violet, to train her, because when, uh, when we get to entice, um, you will meet, there will, there's another, um, uh, there's another Gregory who hasn't met his partner yet, and he's not training her, so, so, be, so basically these veins, according to Grif uh, Griffin, are physical mark of the angel, and it's something unusual according to Lincoln, and Lincoln, by the way, is 26. So yes, I can drool all over him as much as I want because he is close to my age. Because I turned 20, it's um, April 26. I turned 26 in less than a month. So yes, I can drool over Lincoln as much as I want. I love it. I can drool over memories and I can drool over Lincoln. So you guys can't say that I'm a pervert. <laughs> so okay, here we go. Let's get into the Gregory powers. So the Gregory Powers includes enhanced strength, the abil um, ability to sense exile presence, can return exiles to the angel realm, extract the angel powers from the exiles, leaving them human. Um, other angel gifts are individual to their angel maker and what abilities that angel uh, possesses. And Griffin comes from um, the Seraphim and has the powers of truth. So thinks Ball Spiner, but he's able to make people be uh, believe the truth. It's really interesting. It's really weird. Um, and so he uses the force to get people to believe him. And I love I love this scene, like when V ran out the door. And um, yeah, I'm gonna call Violet V sometimes because you know that's her nickname. That Lincoln calls her that too, so I can call her that. So fuck you. <laughs> so he, she ran at the door, and hell, I don't blame her. She couldn't handle it. Me personally, I would be like, shit, I'm part angel. That is fucking awesome. I want I'm uh, I want to embrace. Hell yeah! Tell me what I need to do. I will embrace right now. Let me go do that shit. I want to kill some motherfucking exile. Train me, I'll do it. That's how I would have taken it. Especially since you age slowly and you live for hundreds of years. Damn, damn straight I want to be a, uh, um, um, a Gregory. Hell yeah, give me the, I want to. Give me that shit. Especially if I get, if my partner, well, especially if I can meet men like Lincoln. Yeah, that's, 
That's what I'm talking about. I'm down with that shit. <laughs> and I, okay, let me get back to Violet. So I love when Violet ran at the door, and she called Steph and told her a bridge version of what happened. And, and as I said, she can't tell her the angel part. And when she got to the part about punching Lincoln, Steph just burst out laughing. I was laughing so hard when she did, like she laughed. And I know the the male viewers, uh, my male subscribers are gonna be like, I would have punched Violet back. I'm like, you can't punch Violet back. She was pissed because he because Lincoln lied to her. That's why he punched that she punched him, and he felt guilty. So yeah, and plus Lincoln um, is has incredible strength, so he can take it. And oh yeah, and Steph said she would um, have uh, had her pro chase and his friend Beatley get up, and I thought that was funny. So after walking around aimlessly, Violet walked home, and Lincoln was standing right outside her apartment. I was like, oh, Violet, please don't hate Lincoln. And well, at least you talked to him in his car. And Lincoln was going to tell her about um, her being Gregory the other day, but. He wanted to give her more time, and anyway, to the main point. So he pulls out the box, his box with his uh, connectors. So which you, the connectors which you receive your um, from the angel guides when you embrace, and they have the power to take away an exile's power when you have them in a physical hold. And they also enhance the ability, so that um, the the ability of the Gregory to sense the, um, the exiles, and most Gregory never take them off unless you're going undercover. And each Gregory has different senses every time they touch it. So when Violet touched uh, Gregory or uh, Lincoln, she smelled a field, smelled um, a field of flowers. So that's the, the smell. Uh, she heard the sound of bird wings flapping through the trees and uh, the sound of the wind um, for smell. The taste of apple. Um, the uh, lights flickering on and off when her eyes closed. And when she touched Lincoln. Um, she felt hot and cold sensations, which were freaking intense. Intense. So Lincoln says he has the smell and the sound sensations, and he thinks he might have the touch. And he says he's, it's u unusual to have more than um, one sense, um, one of the senses. And and I thought this was really sweet. So like after this, after you know, shit went down. Um, the first two days, he, Lincoln was waiting outside for an hour to run with with coffee, and then he threw it away. And the third day, he left the coffee at the bus stop, and he wrote, I miss you, written on the side. I was like, oh, Lincoln. So then we meet Phoenix, who is the same guy at Hades, and he has his, this amazing opal hair. Like, I would probably just... If, I would just be touching and playing with, with with Phoenix's hair. I, I know Phoenix is an asshole, but I would I would want I'd be like this with his hair. I probably would. <laughs> Cause I'd be like, is this real? <laughs> so okay, so they're at Doe de Bread, and well, Violet couldn't be holed up in the apartment forever, especially with the lack of food. Cause yeah, Violet and her dad can't cook, make anything except for coffee. So yeah, it took it took you long enough for, to realize that uh, Phoenix was the guy from Hades, but Kami, how the hell can you read you so well? That's what I was thinking. So from the moment Violet holds his hands, the senses kick in, and she knows he's in exile, and runs out the door, makes it back to the apartment, and of course Phoenix is used, is waiting there with the art diary in hand because she left that behind at the um, at the cafe and seen that the smug bastard has been stalking her since her birthday and even watched Lincoln kiss Violet and I was thinking you fucking creepy bastard oh my god Phoenix is Phoenix is creepy as hell and but like at least before Phoenix left he didn't kiss her he was going to but he didn't and um, he's toying with her, and he won't take the kiss. He says he won't take the kiss from her, and he wants her. Phoenix wants her to kiss her only, kiss him only when she wants it most. I'm like thinking, oh, what a creep! I would have just smacked. I would be like, no thanks, get the hell away from me. And he goes on to say that Violet reeks of power because of her angel parent, and that she just she needs to embrace and jumps out the window because Violet up until this point she told Lincoln she doesn't want to embrace and it makes you wonder if Lincoln was honest with her from the beginning if the angels would have let him be honest with uh, Violet from the beginning that um, if Violet would have been more opening to embrace 
Well, also, you know, Phoenix manipulating with Violet's emotions and stuff, it would have made you wonder, too, if Violet would have been more opening to embrace. But anyway, so um, when uh, Steph was rock what so Violet was missing some of the training that she was used to doing with Lincoln, so she went rock climbing with Steph, who was flirting with her boyfriend, her, um, well, now boyfriend, uh, Marcus, not at this point, but later on she comes, he's her boyfriend for, that, for very shallow reasons. And um, then Kami Phoenix is stalking Violet, because otherwise, because Violet lost her hold, she fell, and um, Phoenix caught her, and uh, Steph was like, I want to go with Marcus, and Phoenix, why don't you go walk Violet home, and I was like, fine. So I guess Violet hasn't been eating much because of, you know, all the things going on with Lincoln. So, and Phoenix is stalking her, so he knows this, and Phoenix t took Violet out for pizza, and, um, and, of course, the waitress there, and I didn't mention her earlier, is Claudia. Claudia was at Hayes as well as here, and she, and I'll explain why she's a little bit more important in a second. Um, what's the next thing I have on my list? So, Violet is questioning Phoenix now. So, Phoenix, he makes, he makes his reason for being in exile so seductive and in in our rated. So, basically, angels are non-corporeal, and um, they have the knowledge of senses, um, but since they have no physical bodies like humans, they want to experience the senses for themselves, like, Taste, the taste of wine, as Phoenix said. He loves it. And he loves all, he knows jalapenos are spicy, but he wants to taste it and enjoy it. And Violet was disgusted when he was eating the jalapeno pepper whole. That, or not the jalapeno pepper. Um, it was like a red chili pepper, excuse me. And I was just laughing my ass off. <laughs> and, um, and Phoenix also, he, of course he had to say he loves the, um, Flesh on flesh, the feeling of flesh on flesh, and I'm just like, oh my god, Violet's a virgin, you fucking <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, and then so, according to Phoenix, there is apparently a god, but only the soul has met them, because Violet wasn't sure about god. And remember, there are only two soul angels. Um, Michael the sword and Lucifer the star, so, and there is no hell. Um, remember, this is Hebrew angel-based mythology, after all, and there, if there was a hell, um, angels of hell would always be evil and vice versa for, vice versa for angels of light. So, there's, there's your logic. Christians will, uh, there's your logic, Christians. It, and it would, will be a common theme in angel, um, in the hashtag angel slash angel, hashtag, um, uh, demon readathon within um, that how hell and uh, heaven are so you'll see it a little bit more when we get further on into um, the readathon because there will be uh, Christian based and a lot more in the Christian based uh, angel mythology so um, and within the angel realm angels of light and dark coexist equally so it's probably better a better idea not to know how Phoenix gets money but I still want to know. Um, Jessica, if you're watching this, please answer this. I really want to know how Phoenix gets money. Alright, so after this, Violet witnesses Claudia being controlled by a dark trub exile using imagination. So yeah, so basically we went from using imagination to and thoughts to control um, magic Janus metals and magic to controlling free will. <laughs> I don't want to control free will, but I still would like to control magic, and I'm still waiting for that. So, um, after, uh, after uh, Claudia's free will gets controlled, the exile snaps Claudia's neck, and Violet did try to save her, but Phoenix held her back. But hell, because it would be suicide unless you've embraced already, Violet. And then Phoenix destroyed the exile, and holy, and I was thinking, holy, call me an Arceus, Phoenix. And this is he's your fellow exile, and he ripped his heart out. And I love what Phoenix said right after that. I thought that was badass. He said, "Gregory has their ways; exiles have their own." So we found out that Phoenix is an empath, and it's something some angels and exiles can do. And what 
an empath is, is they can read and influence emotions and intensify um, some, wait, wait, where is it? Uh, they can read and influence emotions, intensify some, and eradicate others. And yes, Violet, you have been influenced by the empath, and to an extent, um, anyway, <laughs> to an extent anyway, Phoenix, you motherfucking bastard. Okay, so we're at the 30 minute mark, and I'm looking at my notes, and we're only halfway done with um, my uh, note, with all my notes that I have. So I think I'm just going to do a part two for this book Nerdigan discussion, because there's a, still a lot more detail. So I want to know what you think of Embrace so far, um, up to this point. Do you, do you like how um, Violet's character is being developed? Um, do you like, what do you think of Phoenix? Do you think there's something off about Phoenix? Um, do you, what do you think about how, um, what do you think about the exiles? What do you think about the fact that, they, how Phoenix said there's really no hell and that the, um, angels of light and dark actually just coexist in the angel realm? I'm kind of curious what you, what you book nerd again think about that. So I will continue this on in part two of the Embrace Book Nerd Again discussion. I will see you later. Bye.